Welcome everybody to our next webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski and uh, you know that you just can call me Stefan whenever you have a question. <clears throat> just use the go-to webinar control panel because there you can um, get in touch with me direct during the webinar. But even afterwards, uh, keep in mind uh, that email address here uh, already on the first slide. I know my last name is quite complicated but maybe a screenshot uh, might help. Or um, just uh, that, you know, um, as always, I have uploaded uh, the slides for today's webinar about mean reversion trading strategies uh, already. And that means you can download <coughs> those slides uh, once again in the GoToWebinar control panel. Yeah, today the 28th of June 2017, so nearly half a year is over for the year 2017. But anyhow, stock markets are, are as always, complicated, as always, tricky. And uh, how to beat it, uh, to beat them a little bit, that is part of, the, uh, of today's webinar mean reversion trading strategies. But before I jump uh, into the topics, uh, just, um, you know, I have always uh, to show uh, first thing that slide, uh, because we talk about trading, trading strategies. But finally, when you trade, you trade on your own. I think um, that is uh, quite well understood and uh, quite well known. So, but anyhow, that is done. But back to our um, topic, mean reversion strategies. You might have seen some advertisement for uh, that webinar and uh, have simply to mention uh, that uh, ad here, um, mean reversion trading setups, because um, the guy who has um, built up uh, that uh, picture for um, LinkedIn and Facebook has really done a great job because what you see here is already part of the strategy we talk today. Um, you see some spots here within that chart and you immediately realize, hey, that would have been perfect entries for something reverse. So perfect entries back to the normal. Um, and indeed, exactly that is a kind of strategy we um, want to create within that webinar. Um, and that is a mean reversion strategy. You can think already about, hey, there's a mean value here in the middle and the price goes always back to that mean value. Later, I will call that the fair value, but um, it's uh, that nice that we have that good advertisement picture here. Uh, therefore, I simply mention that uh, here as well. So that is... Um, LinkedIn, but I think you can find it, uh, the same picture on Facebook as well. But not talking about uh, advertisement anymore here. Uh, we go direct into the topic of today. Um, so what are the specific topics? Because uh, you know that, that I like uh, not only to talk about the trading strategy itself, um, I would guide you a little bit of uh, how to come to those kind of strategies and um, today's topic or special topic uh, before we really start with the mean reversion strategies is how to optimize trading strategies. And that gives you a short insight uh, into some key figures I typically use whenever I um, deal with trading strategies, especially if I optimize those trading strategies. We need some special key figures uh, in order to do that kind of job. And um, finally, we boil it down to one single key figure and um, how to do that and why, especially that kind of key figure, I want to share with you in the first part of this webinar, but then we go directly into the basics of mean reversion strategies in general. And finally, specifically, um, 
And as already done with some other strategies, I will present results um, in Excel here. And I hope that um, maybe you find it interesting to do trading strategies already with Excel. And uh, you know that uh, I'm um, more than willing to share those Excel sheets with you as well. So whenever you want to have those sheets, just send me an email and um, Finally, uh, on the last slide, once again, there will be uh, my email address. But um, if you simply miss that part, you can write to su support of JFD as well. Good. So that's for the interaction. But um, first of all, I want to deal a little bit uh, about optimizing trading strategies. Let me introduce in general, what I do here. Um, whenever we talk about trading strategy, then we talk about fixed rules. Because when I create a strategy, uh, there's no human input factor, no human impact on the trading activities. So finally, everything has to have absolutely fixed rules. So that means entry and exit of a trade is well described um, and we need that definitely uh, and we need both the entry and the exit the exit might be a stop loss might be a take profit or whatever but finally it's important that every trade uh, has to come to an end so therefore um, we need an exit of that trade and we need rules behind that. In most cases, when we talk about trading strategies, like I talk here about those uh, trading strategies, we have some descriptive parameters. That sounds a little bit abstract, but um, what I simply mean is, for example, we have a trading strategy which is based on EMA. Then that EMA, that EMA period, is one of those parameters and since every trade should have a stop loss and um, in my case it always has a stop loss then that stop loss distance might be a second parameter for example in percent of the price uh, percent is not that bad because you know that for example if we talk about uh, ducks today ducks is about 12,000 something but years ago it have been at 2000 so talking about stop losses in fixed distances like uh, 20 points uh, would not be a good idea uh, especially for ducks at forex sometimes you can live with uh, fixed numbers but even there you think about uh, for example <clears throat> euro japanese yen which has been at 160 today is about 120 so mm, um, percentage description would be much more appropriate and finally we might have a take profit um, and um, the parameter to, to describe that take profit um, might be a risk reward ratio for example <clears throat> so we have in this case three parameters and that means finally we have three um, degrees of freedom for that strategy and the task now is to find those values for EMA stop loss in percent and uh, risk reward ratio just as an example for the best results but now the tricky part is already there what are the best results normally that question uh, sounds extremely easy because we talk about trading <clears throat> so a maximum profit should be the target and what else um, but think about it. So just to maximize your final end profit of that trading strategy, looking back for a history uh, of maybe 10 years, maybe one year, whatever, think about you have earned finally 10,000 euros, but in between your account has been hugely to the minus. So just maximizing the profit 
is maybe not the best answer to the question, uh, what is the best st trading strategy? So there might be another parameter, like for example, a minimum drawdown. So you know that the drawdown within an equity um, is the, the strongest losing sequence and the strongest losing sequence does not mean uh, success, successive um, loser trades. No, it's meant from a local maximum to um, the next um, um, minimum. And if that is a huge distance, and then this is a drawdown within an equity curve. i give you the next slide an example, then it becomes much more obvious. So the question, once again, what is the best trading strategy or the best results, the best equity, turning around a little bit with the descriptive parameters, in this case, EMA, stop loss and take profit, it's not a straightforward question. So we should uh, dig into that topic a little, a little bit more uh, to come to one single key figure in order to answer that question. But let me give you an example. Uh, within that slide, you can see four equity curves. All start at an account of 1,000 euros, and then you have four equity lines here. And back to the topic of maximum drawdown, for example, within the red curve here, um, the maximum drawdown would be from here, where my cursor is now, down to here. Uh, that is, uh, um, let's call it the highest or the strongest um, drawdown sequence within <clears throat> those uh, nearly 1,000 trades. We have maybe a similar drawdown here and maybe a similar drawdown here, but the maximum within the red line uh, will be here. So now the question to you, and just uh, use the chat um, here, uh, the, the question um, channel, to answer the question, what number of equity lines, one, two, three, four, is the best one here. So which one you would prefer being your own account? Uh, it might be the red one, so equity line one, or maybe one of those uh, other ones here. So the red is definitely the one with the highest profit, no question. Um, so total gain is about uh, 4,000 euros in this case, and all the others have uh, less good results. Um, but the question is now, what is the best answer? Uh, what is the best uh, equity here out of those uh, four? Now I got um, talking long enough uh, to give you the chance to for some answers. Uh, I got uh, a couple of uh, answers and I can tell you all of them are absolutely right. The best one here, and uh, I can simply switch to my next slide. The best one is equity line number two. And you might ask yourself why? So it's definitely not the one with the highest profit. Um, within those uh, four equity lines, uh, it's the one with the uh, third um, highest um, profit. So there's only one line uh, below. But nevertheless, this one is definitely the best. Why? So we have a couple of things here. We have a positive slope which is fine. So we have an increase in our uh, account. Um, and then the maximum drawdown, even if I don't know the, the uh, answer in numbers, um, is quite low. So compared, for example, to the red one, um, it's definitely um, something totally different. Finally, if you think about that equity line two, you might even leverage every trade higher or um, to say it a little bit different, you might double your risk per trade if you have a trading strategy with, which gives result like uh, equity uh, line two. So we can easily double our result and maybe we need a factor of three. And finally, we are in the same region like equity line one, 
But still, even if you do it just by eye, you can see um, that the maximum drawdown would still be less than the red one. So you see already two aspects or uh, we need for for judging uh, equity lines one is the slope and the other one is definitely the maximum drawdown within that equity so and that brings me finally to my key figures i use and i will jump back to the slide uh, in a minute but so my useful key figures in order to optimize any given trading strategy, I start indeed with the slope of the equity. And what is nice or what would be nice is to maximize um, the slope. The higher the slope, the more profit. Perfect. But on the other hand, simultaneously, we need to minimize the maximum drawdown. So the perfect trading strategy would have zero drawdown and uh, you will never reach it, but um, that is, is sure. But to minimize the maximum drawdown is definitely a good idea. And finally, I use one additional aspect and um, that is a key number uh, which stems from regression lines uh, within uh, whatever you do. Um, and that is called the linearity. And that number, and uh, I quickly jump already in something I will present later, um, because here we have an equity uh, curve and um, you see already the final result for an equity of mean reversion strategy. And what is in, within that equity is a regression line. In this case, the regression line is simply calculated um, by Excel. And you can see within the chart the formula of uh, that equity. But there's another key figure you can use and it is called R square. And that R square is a key number to describe the linearity. And if you would have an R square of one, it would be a perfect straight line. And if you would have an R, um, R square, um, then it would be random noise. So then you would have um, huge deviations um, around that equity or around that regression line. So since we all like linear equity curves, I can put that number into my calculation again. That's a little bit doubling the, um, the impact of drawdowns, because if you have huge drawdowns, that will ruin the linearity as well. But finally, Linear equities are quite well, and um, we all like them. And now, if you have those three numbers calculated, we can construct a single number in order to judge any equity. And what we do is simply, we um, calculate the quotient of maximum drawdown divided by the slope of the equity. Think again about the maximum drawdown should be minimized and the slope should be maximized. So if we have those two numbers in a quotient, then we want to have that number being minimized. And I simply call that number uh, profit factor. It's a little bit misleading. Um, sorry for that, but uh, that um, name was already created uh, five years ago when I started uh, with those, those kind of uh, trading strategies. And so I want to minimize that profit factor. And you see what happens. If you minimize that quotient, then you simultaneously maximize the slope and you minimize the maximum drawdown and you balance both. Finally, my key figure is simply called Opti 
And that is once again the same, uh, the profit factor divided by R square, R square. And then since that number has values between <clears throat> zero and one, um, so it, uh, a point 0.9 would increase that quotient. And therefore, once again, I want to minimize that single number. And it's extremely good to have a single number when we talk about equity curves because when we have a single number then we can play around with our descriptive parameters of a trading strategy like emas stop loss in percent or whatever <clears throat> whatever parameter we have and we can always calculate that single number and now we have uh, even mathematically correct um, optimization problem with one key figure. And that's ideal because then we can do things uh, automatically and we don't have to look to equity lines by eye in order to judge which one is better than the other. I make already the remark here <clears throat> that we have to avoid over-optimization. Um, that will be in the future webinar, a special topic uh, as this one here um, and how to do that. But generally speaking, what do I mean when I uh, talk about avoid over optimization? Simply think about a trading strategy which gives good results <clears throat> with an EMA of 200 and think about you change that EMA period to 201 and it would ruin your equity line, then you have done what is called over optimization because I would not trust that kind of trading strategy, which is good at 200 for an EMA and bad for an EMA 201. The story would be different if I talk about EMA 4 and EMA, uh, EMA uh, 5 because then percentage wise the difference is uh, much more pronounced. But for 200 and 201, I think we all agree uh, that this would not be a good idea to have uh, uh, that kind of trading strategy. One other remark here about optimization, it's a little bit as a question of um, like uh, if you you want to come um, um, by car from um, village A to village B, then the question is what is the best um, route to come from one end to the other? Um, but uh, and then the, the the answer would depend on how to optimize. Um, it might be the shortest distance. Um, but it might be the fastest um, travel or it might be the one with uh, minimum um, um, consumption of, of uh, um, gasoline or whatever. So you need such a key figure in order to optimize something. And we want to optimize trading strategies. And I personally use that kind of number, which is simply called Opti. And if you think a little bit longer about <clears throat> the quotient uh, maximum drawdown divided by slope of equity, that is quite a cool number because um, the typical number would be, for example, 600. And uh, that number um, would tell you already something about uh, the, the minimum account size versus um, profitability. So if you want to earn one euro per day and you would have a profit factor of 600 that would mean you need an account of 600 euros and you would suffer at least once uh, within that equity line a drawdown of 600 euros i know that um, if that would be uh, at the very beginning you would get a margin call but um, that's uh, only practical trading so that's but you will realize the meaning of that factor. Uh, and I can promise you that needs some time um, to, to get that meaning. Uh, for me, it was the same. But anyhow, we know what we want to minimize in order to get uh, now best trading strategies. Good. But now 
direct into the topic of the main topic of today, mean reversion strategies. And I mentioned already uh, with the picture of a few as aspects of uh, that trading strategy, mean reversion trading strategies, the picture uh, of the advertisement. So the basic assumption of the mean reversion strategies is the following. The, think about there is a fair price for a given underlying. That's up to now only a statement. But let's assume there is one. Then, of course, um, that fair price should not wiggle around that fast. I mean, if it's um, now uh, 1.58, um, within the next couple of minutes, it not should change dramatically. So that would be a fair price. How to define that fair price precisely? We come to that topic and you will learn that we don't need the real meaning of what is a fair price of an underlying. Um, but at least we need something we think which is more the smooth value, the, the one the price wants to be. And that means that the actual price, and you all know charts with huge deviations up and down and so on, the actual price might deviate from that fair value. And the next hypothesis here is simply that whenever we have huge deviations from that fair price, then the price will tend to come back to the fair value. Let me simply give you an example um, within the chart. And I think I have here one already uh, within the slides. So in this case, I have, um, in this case, it's uh, Australian dollar, US dollar on an M15 chart, but uh, it doesn't, um, we, I don't care really about the underlying and uh, the time frame right now. So assume we have an EMA within our chart and you can clearly identify extremely good trading um, possibilities just looking to the EMA and the actual price. Exactly here in the middle we have a very good situation. You see we have a huge deviation from the EMA and now a short trade entered here opened at that point in time would be a nice idea and then the price goes back to the what i now call fair value or back to the ema and you can see there are other um, possibilities even within that uh, maybe 50 candles here that we have whenever we have huge deviations from the ema the price tends to come back to that EMA. The question immediately is, hey, what EMA should I use and when should a trade be triggered? So when is the deviation huge? Because up to now I only use that word uh, huge and uh, does not uh, give you any any clear definition but at least what we can see is think about this phase here there we don't have um, huge deviations from the EMA so in this case we should not open any trade only if we have that real huge deviations and that um, brings us back to possible definitions for such a fair value. Since I don't know exactly what is a real fair value, I can simply use other values, just name them the fair value. So for example, I can use an EMA or an SMA and finally we will use an EMA and the only reason is uh, that is um, the, the way how to calculate it in Excel is uh, much more um, 
also it's easier to to uh, to do it with an EMA um, than an SMA. Uh, finally, um, I'm sure that it would not really depend on uh, EMA or SMA. You might think about other things how to come to a fair value. You might use the chart itself like and put a regression line into a certain price history. Just to give you an example of what I mean here, uh, let me come switch here to, uh, to a chart and now let me at least um, make one here a little bit uh, bigger and let's zoom a little bit. And now we have a chart functionality which is called um, channel and there you have one thing which is called linear regression and that is something you can simply draw here and that means we have um, now the chart is fitted by a straight line and um, that means we can think about that value here is fair value and now we can ask okay we have a um, huge deviation from that fair value we should now open a short trade so that the price comes back to that fair value so that might be another possibility to to come to a definition of a fair value with some certain history whatever then this would be the number we have to optimize um, what is the number of candles for that regression line and then once again we have to think about what is a huge deviation so that's all um, so that's simply um, uh, a regression line here within the chart um, so that would be another possibility to have a definition of a fair value but even other values might be of interest just values from higher time frames um, we simply can define that maybe the Friday last price of whatever we call the fair value for the next week um, or within a day uh, at four o'clock um, the EZB, um, European Central uh, Bank, uh, announce the reference numbers for uh, Euro, US dollar. And then we call that the fair value. So there might be hundreds of definitions. And finally, our trading result, of course, is always different. Um, but we can optimize everything uh, in order to come to a good trading strategy. But now, really what does it mean if we have or if we think about trading rules for that specific setup mean reversion trading strategies the basic idea i think you got it already that the price comes back to its fair value therefore mean reversion so coming back to the mean and the trading rules or and the parameters we need for that kind of strategy is uh, one oh <laughs> my spelling error here um, 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 our degrees of freedom or parameters in order to describe our strategy one will be an EMA period okay that's easy to define and we know what to calculate and even within a chart we definitely know what we are doing then what we need is that deviation from the EMA and that's how I would do it. I go for the close price of a certain candle. And now I create the, um, the difference between the close price and the EMA value, like we did visually in the chart. And I would go for the absolute value of that divided by the close price. Why? Um, then we have something which would be more like a percentage a deviation. So the higher the number, the more deviation we have. But we are in line with um, DAX values uh, now 12,000, 10 years ago at uh, 2,000. So if we have that percentage definition, um, then we 
are always on the safe side, even if we get totally new um, prices uh, like uh, the DAX values I mentioned. So, and our whenever we 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 exceed the, a, a certain threshold, then we would open a trade. Finally, what we need is a stop loss. A stop loss, for example, in percent of the price, um, and that we have uh, a given stop loss for our trade. And now back to the question, we always need entries and exits. So a trade is opened if the threshold is exceeded. Okay, well understood. But now, when to close the trade? Because we don't have a take profit uh, within the trading rules. And the simple trading rule would be, for example, when we cross the EMA based on the close price of our candles, once again, then th this would close our trade. Let me show you that within our chart and you still re uh, remember, hey, here would be the ideal uh, point in time to open a short trade. And that trade would be closed here. Why here? Because there we have a close price below the EMA. And now we uh, can do different things. We can do on the one hand, that's what we will do uh, in the next couple of minutes. We create that strategy within an Excel sheet. Or what you can see already, how to use it, you can do it discretionary directly within a chart. So um, whenever you, you encounter a huge deviations from a given EMA, then you can think about, should I enter a trade? Yes or no? And then you can manage that trade uh, by your own. So it's not only a machine-like trading strategy. You can use it for your daily trading activities as well, simply by looking to the chart. And the good thing is that um, since we have always a little bit history within the chart, we get a good feeling of what is a huge deviation. And um, for example, if we would be exactly here at the end of the chart and think about you would ask yourself, should I enter a trade now? The clear answer would be no, at least not according to this strategy because that close price of that candle has not a huge deviation to the EMA. So that would be uh, beyond any question and we would not open a trade according to this specific uh, trading strategy. But what we can do now is we can uh, calculate things uh, directly in Excel um, and uh, we can have uh, single lines for every trade and um, whatever. So, but that are the trading rules. Now let me jump once again to that Excel sheet here. Uh, I used already in order to, to uh, show you what a regression line is. And um, what we have here is an Excel sheet exactly for that kind of trading strategy. And I don't want to guide you uh, completely through that Excel sheet, but let me at least um, only here the very beginning. Um, so we have to calculate an EMA. Uh, that is a simple formula here. And then you see what I use here. Um, in this case, without absolute values, uh, because I do it later. Um, we have that deviation in percent. And then we use a certain threshold. And that would trigger a trade. Finally, what we additionally need is we need a rule like whenever a trigger comes and we open a trade, then all next triggers for additional trades are ignored. So we always have maximum one trade open. So for example, here you can see I have three times a trigger um, for a long trade, but only the first one would be used uh, to open that trade. And only if that trade comes to an end, then with the next candle, we can open uh, um, 
the next trade. So the trade uh, here down to the right of that Excel sheet, uh, there the trade is managed. And of course, we have a stop loss value and so on and so forth. Um, you see already here still something like a risk reward ratio. Uh, I don't use it uh, really, but the Excel sheet is already prepared for um, a take profit as well. So then we would have two alternative um, trading ends. One would be the cross of the EMA, and the other one would be that we might hit our take profit. But since I use here um, extremely huge numbers for risk reward ratios, um, we will never reach uh, the formula uh, the, the take profit. You see within that Excel sheet as well, exactly the same key figures uh, I have introduced today, um, like profit per day, which would be the slope, uh, maximum drawdown, profit factor, R square, and finally, that opti. So that is a number which we want to have to be, oh, which we want to have minimized. How? By changing, for example, EMA values, like what I do here. And you can see each um, time uh, you see a different equity line he here, um, but, uh, and you s might have seen that it becomes worse when I went upwards here with my EMA. But what I always do finally, I simply look to exactly that number. Or we can change that threshold, for example, uh, to other values. Then once again, we get new results. And now we are back to the question, hey, we can optimize that trading strategy simply by changing three numbers, EMA, the threshold value, and the stop loss in percent. One additional remark, um, what you always, if you try to use Excel, uh, um, this Excel sheet uh, for other underlyings, please don't forget to change the spread value, um, because that should be within the trading strategy as well. So if you would fill in uh, data, for example, for Euro, US dollar, please don't use a spread of 0.03. Um, you will see that it ruins uh, every trading strategy. Um, so you always have to use the right numbers. So now one thing is what we can do is we can simply change those numbers. The other good news is, or the other, what we can do here as well is, and now I change to the other uh, Excel here, um, and that's the same Excel sheet. Um, the only thing what I want to show you here is that I can do that optimization completely by computer power. That means I don't have to change those numbers by my own and then try to find the best combination of the three values, EMA, threshold, and stop loss. I can um, get help or assist here from what is called the so-called solver. And that means um, I have to, to specify what number should be minimized in my case, and then um, I give um, value ranges for those different um, parameters like EMA, threshold, and stop loss. And then I simply have to press that button. Um, and now it might take uh, some, uh, some minutes uh, to get the best results. Um, I have to mention here that that kind of algorithm which is used here um, from Microsoft does does not automatically get the best numbers. Um, there is some randomness um, in that optimization process and uh, therefore I can only tell you uh, try to do it uh, several times in a row and you might uh, get different numbers and um, then you simply uh, go for the best ones. Um, <clears throat> but that's only because of the algorithm which is used here and um, so it takes some time. In the meantime, let's uh, do the computer that job. Let's 
us uh, in the meantime, look, um, can we do similar things for other underlines? And the answer is yes, we can. And uh, in this case, we have uh, DAX values, and you can see here, once again, an equity line. You can change a little bit the numbers, and it might get better or worse. Um, the funny thing here is um, that there's a long period without trades. Okay. In this case, the deviations have been not huge enough. All the data here are daily uh, data, but you can use more or less the same thing here for uh, intraday h1 data whatever um, the only reason i don't do it within the webinar is simply uh, the excel sheets get very slow um, and uh, therefore it's not that good to show it because um, sometimes it's too long time and just uh, another example here uh, that is uh, s p 500 um, Interesting fact, uh, we have here a period with not that much trades as well, and it's the same point in time. So there uh, must be something more behind that we don't have huge deviations uh, within that period of time. But still you can see, hey, good results. We can have and uh, get a good increase in our equity. Um, from the three I, I show here around, uh, the brand is definitely the best, uh, no question. And uh, hopefully uh, our solver gets the result um, because now it should be the time that I can share those results with you once again. Um, in the meantime, oh, now, now it's ready. Um, okay. And now we you might remember that uh, we started with an opti of about uh, 700 and um, now we have an opti of about 300 so a much better result that is the equity uh, with 1600 trades so it's definitely a statistic and um, you might wonder because we have an ema of uh, 15.3 and you can't uh, enter those numbers within MT4, but um, don't worry. Uh, if I go for 15, uh, it uh, will not change the result uh, set that much. So that's a quite good trading strategy, automatically optimized by the computer or by the Excel sheet itself. And that kind of equity and the units um, of the y-axis here is uh, r that means the risk unit you can think now about real trades and if you always would invest 100 euro per trade then you can multiply all those numbers here with 100 euro and you have all the results in euro of course we have an equity with drawdowns and i can tell you the maximum drawdown is um, about 100 within that equity we have faces without any profit yes but that happens always with any trading strategy we have steep increases flat behaviors and we have drawdowns um, but anyhow that sounds like a quite reasonable uh, trading strategy so that is really a very good result next step would be to change our, once again those parameters a little bit and see whether we get immediately quite worse results if that would be the case then um, we would have over optimized that kind of trading strategy but back to how to use it so one is of course we can now um, open a chart a brand uh, daily base uh, put an ema um, of uh, 15 within the chart and uh, then we calculate always the, the difference of the actual close price uh, to the ema we look whether we exceed the threshold and then we would open a trade that's all still the other idea um, because I want to do that here maybe once again. And let me simply change time frame uh, just to see um, can we do similar things uh, even by eye within the chart? And you can clearly see 
the answer is yes. It's a good thing, for example, yesterday evening, uh, I have had the same webinar in German, and I went for the same chart, Euro, British Pound, H4, and uh, yesterday uh, we have been around here, and uh, I took exactly that example here. Hey, it looks like we get a good time for opening a short trade uh, in Euro, British Pound, and Okay, uh, statistics one, perfect trade would be closed, um, I think, nearly 24 hours later uh, with a good profit, no question, but that's statistics one. Uh, we know, we all know that within those kind of strategies, we don't have always uh, winner trades. And uh, just one moment, just one step back here, that you see what we have here. We have a win weight, which is not that huge. So that means there are quite a lot of trades, like um, when I do it here within the chart, we always go for, for stop losses, which are not that far away. And therefore the probability to um, to run into the stop loss is, is uh, in principle high but in case of a winner trade we have really very good results and you can see directly within the chart other good trading chances uh, here within uh, the chart um, and but of course you find examples uh, with loser trades as well for example here i would say yeah huge deviation um, opening a short trade, starting good, but looking at least to the complete um, trading rules I presented here, we have not crossed the EMA here. So that would have been a loser trade. I, um, uh, I'm always that honest to show that results as well. Um, so we don't have always winner trades. But nevertheless, we have quite well trading strategy here. We can manage everything within Excel, for example, um, in this case on a daily base, um, but you can do similar things on, a, um, on other time frames as well. And you can use um, those kind of functionalities like uh, the Excel solver in order to get the results optimized. What you need is, a single key figure and for me that single key figure is that number opti here good back to the slides um although we are nearly up to the end of uh, that uh, webinar i think you have seen that um, mean reversion trading strategies can be used uh, twofold yeah you can use it directly within the chart simply by comparing uh, the actual price to a given EMA and look for huge deviations and automatically your eye will guide you of what is huge and what is not huge because you always see a little bit history uh, of the chart, chart in um, order to judge that situation. But even what you can do is you can do it completely uh, electronically here like uh, in Excel in order to to come to um, a fixed strategy with fixed stop loss fixed EMA and um, you can optimize that trading strategy simply by your own so two possibilities to go further with that strategy it's the mighty tool mean reversion because it's based on the assumption that the price comes back to its fair value. The only thing is always we need a definition of that fair value. But even if we use other kind of definitions like um, regression lines um, or higher time frames, you will see that we can get quite good results uh, as well. So that's for today. Um, next webinars will come next month. You will always get an email or you look to the web page um, from. Um, um, JFT Brokers. Uh, there are tons of webinars around, uh, other um, speakers as well, really good speakers, I can tell you. Um, so I can only recommend look to the calendar of um, JFT and hopefully we see us back 
um, even with my next webinar in July. In the meantime, if you have any question, just send an email to this complicated email address s.friedrichowski at JFT Brokers or you have downloaded the slides already, then you find the name within the slides um, as well. So that's for now. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Um, I wish you a good evening and a good um, week, remaining week. So enjoy your time. Bye-bye.